Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best day MDC, and it's time for another video on budget gear. I've done a lot of budget stuff lately. I've just been on this budget kick because a lot of people for a long time said I only talked about expensive gear, which one isn't true at all, but also because while my tastes have changed and expanded and kind of gotten a little pricey, a lot of, a lot of the gear I carry is pretty expensive. There's also plenty of budget gear that I still carry and stuff that won't break the bank and is just as good, if not better sometimes than the really expensive gear. More reliable sometimes and of course, more easily replaced. This video was originally gonna be like 10 must have pieces of EDC gear under 20 bucks, but it really just turned into, hey, here's a whole bunch of stuff that you can buy for under 20 bucks and it's all quality stuff. Well, mostly quality stuff, but some of it's still just worth having even if it's gonna fail on you sometimes. You'll see what I mean. With all of that said, let's do the damn thing. All right, let's start with multi-tools because that's probably gonna be the smallest category in this whole video because multi-tools by their traditional name, like this, something like the Gerber Dime, those are typically gonna be far more expensive than $20. So under $20, you're looking at a much more limited selection. There are plenty of options out there, but one of my favorite little micro multi-tools, the Leatherman Micra is 30 bucks. So under 20 bucks, options are limited. A lot of people spend a lot of money on little pocket pry tools made of titanium and all sorts of other gear. All you really need at the end of the day it's just a little piece of metal, something like this right here. This is the Nitai's doohickey. It's got a few different tools on it, which I find not really super useful, but as a pry tool, little impromptu flathead for a camera plate or a bottle opener, this thing has been great. And they're only like four bucks. You can find these at Walmart sometimes, not mine apparently. You can find them at Lowe's. These things are widely, widely available and not very expensive at all. But I would say, the more popular little pry tool keychain doodad is from Gerber. It is the Gerber Shard. And this is a little more robust. It's definitely more of a pry tool. It's curved on the end and it actually has a nail lifter. Whereas this one is just a little flat pry tool. This one actually has a groove there where you can actually get under a nail and pry. Never really had to use one for that, but you have a Phillips head on this one as well. The bottle opener I found on this one is a little questionable. Really, it just kind of tears the bottle cap off. This one clips on your keys using this big lanyard hole here. My biggest problem with the Gerber Shard is how uncomfortable it is to carry. Put this on your keys, it just kind of never lays flat with everything else. And if you carry it in your pocket, you've got this, this hump that's always kind of in the way. So the Gerber Shard is a very popular tool. Also only five bucks, give or take. It's gonna do everything that the Lynch Northwest All Access Pass is gonna do and more. And it's, you know, less than a 10th of the price. It's like a 15th of the price. Now, moving away from just little pocket pries, you have one of the most common Swiss Army knives in carries, especially on keychains, the Victorinox Classic SD. It is a tiny, tiny little multi-tool. This is the Alox version, and I should note, I don't have a version of the Classic SD that's under $20, but I wasn't gonna just buy one for this video just because it had plastic scales instead of metal. This is the Alox version, it's about 25. The plastic version you, you can get for around 16 to 20. So they come in a bunch of different colors and graphics and stuff. In fact, Blade HQ has a mermaid version of this knife, which I do own as well, but I wasn't gonna include that either. Either way, all you get on this tool is a very small blade. You have a nail file and a flathead and a pair of scissors and a little split ring for your keys. This thing is very, very slim, very lightweight, very inconspicuous, but it can also just get the job done. You need to cut a little something with some scissors or a knife, you got a tiny little knife. And for me, the main reason I've ever really carried a classic SD is the scissors and the nail file. That's really about it. Really solid option for about 16 bucks. They are as the name suggests, a classic and highly recommended. Now, for me, the one that I've always used, always, and as you can see, it's been through it, this is the Gerber Dime, and this is more along the lines of your traditional multi-tool. Now, these also can go up to $25, but I have regularly found these for 15, 16 bucks. More recently, they've gone up in price, and I'm not really sure why that is, 
but typically these are under $20. So I'm including it in this. You've got a pair of scissors. You have a little flathead as well as a file. You have a metal and a wood file, I believe. You have another flathead here. On the inside, you've got full set of pliers. You have a bottle opener and a lanyard hole here. And then you've got your knife, a package opener, and I believe that's it. And it has served me well for a while. It was my little fishing tool. It's a small little pocket multi-tool. It's not heavy duty. It's gonna be light duty work only, but those are the multi-tools I would recommend under 20 bucks. Probably the biggest selection under $20 is gonna be pens because you have your Zebra F301s, you have your Papermate Ink Joys, the Pilot G2, G2 Minis. There are tons of pens that are just perfectly fine under 20 bucks. But once you start looking into more, once you start getting into slightly nicer pens and still staying under that $20, it does filter out quite a bit pretty quickly. But I would say these are probably the most common. And the reason for that is because they're just rock solid. The most common, I would argue, is the Fisher Space Pen Bullet, at least in the EDC world, because it is so compact and it's just darn reliable. They write on anything, anywhere, anytime, upside down, underwater, in space, it doesn't matter. These things just write, and that's because they have a pressurized refill inside, and they were designed for space. Not the bullet necessarily, the original space pin was, but the bullet is just a very compact, very carryable pin. The problem I've always had with Fisher Space Pins is that the ink refills are a little blotchy. They, they skip a lot while you're writing, but they're also so easy to lose. Travex, and, and you can buy one with a clip, but Travex also has a version of it with the flat cap. Uh, but there are just so many different versions of the Fisher Space Pin Bullet, and they range from like $15 to $20. You can also go up in price well over $20. If you wanna get a titanium version or a copper version, they can get up to 60, 70, even 100 plus dollars for a Fisher Space Pin. Aside from the Fisher Space Pin, you have two very similar options here. I would say the more robust option that I would choose is the Zebra F701, but you also have the Parker Jotter. This is one I modified for my budget carry video, the best EDC under $100. I acid etched this thing, which kind of mucked it up a little bit. It's a little sticky now. Solid pin. The Parker Jotter insert is one of the most loved out there. You can put just about anything inside this. You can put a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000, a Schneider Jellion. There are tons of different refills you can put inside this pin. And the F701 is really cheap. This is $6 compared to about eight to 12, 14, $15, depending on which version you get. The F701 is just six bucks. The refills inside them are a little less universal, I guess you could say. The refill inside this one is a G18. It's a little less common, but the pin itself, it's a zebra. It's gonna write beautifully. And these at $6 are a steal. This one is also a really great option, but pins really are just gonna come down to personal preference and how you like to write, what works best for you. For me, I like to go very compact on pins. So if I were to choose one, I would probably go with this Travax version of the Fisher Space Pin, just because I like the flat cap, but also the matte black finish. You can get this one in a matte black finish with a clip as well, but I would go with one of the Fisher Space Pins with a fine refill in it instead of the medium. But that's just me. These are just some of your best options for pins under 20 bucks. There are dozens, maybe even hundreds of really great flashlights to buy under $20, but these would be the ones that I would recommend. My personal recommendations, however, are the i3T and the i1R. Just throwing that out there. The other option for Molite is an i3E EOS, which is a twist AAA. So it's kind of like the middle ground between the i1R and the i3T. It's a twist AAA flashlight. This one is probably the limit of what I would want to carry on my keychain, but it would be great for a keychain flashlight because if it does die, you can just pop another battery in there no matter where you are. You can find a AAA anywhere, and that's going to be the case with any of these AAAs and why people like AAA flashlights so much. For me personally, I like something I can recharge. But for me, my favorite budget flashlight is the i1R, and it's because it is so, so tiny. You can put this on your keychain and totally forget about it. It's like it's not even there. And it isn't super bright. I think you get about 150 lumens out of this on its brightest setting, and it's only gonna last for about 20 minutes. But in a pinch, this thing has been a lifesaver. That low mode is plenty for finding stuff in total darkness. And when you need a little extra light, this 150 is actually fairly bright, and you're not gonna get much more output out of any of these. 
you're just gonna get longer run times. The Lumen Top Tool AAA is the one that I carried for my budget video, and I mentioned that I did not like this light. The reason for me is just the interface is opposite from what I want. You can't do any momentary on with this light, so you have to fully press it on and then select your mode. The Olight is the opposite. You can half press and select your mode and then full click to have continuous on. I prefer the way that Olight does that, but this flashlight is honestly perfectly fine. They're very, very similar flashlights. This one's more compact, um, but they're both around the same price. These are both $20. This I believe is about 10 bucks. And this one, I think I got this one for the video. This is the Lumitop EDC-01. I think I got this one for seven bucks, but this one is gonna be very similar to your Olight. You, you've got plenty of options under $20 for flashlights, but Lumitop Tool and Olight would be my two brands that I would say stick to under 20 bucks. These are the ones that I would recommend. So when it comes to keys and key solutions and key organizers and key clips and ways to attach things to your keys or better ways to carry your keys, there are a billion options under 20 bucks. You can spend way more than 20 bucks, but for the most part, under $20 is really the sweet spot for key stuff. And I'm sure I'm going to overlook some things that you guys would recommend. If there's anything that you would recommend that I missed here, just Comment down below with what that is. Let's just try to tackle this beast as fast as we can. One of my favorite pieces of gear that I've carried for over a decade are Nighties S Beaners. These are the mini locking ones. I don't know the exact name of the size, but the locking S Beaners. These are perfect for attaching just a flashlight or something to your keychain so you can quickly remove it, but it locks so it's not gonna come off accidentally. I've lost so many things from the old S Beaners that did not lock. And uh, the one thing to note about these is that they'll wear out over time. This lock will no longer work and the plastic will wear out and wear down and you will no longer be able to lock them. These are not like a buy once, cry once sort of thing. It's more of a buy it and use it till it wears out and then replace it with another set. Really highly recommend them. I use them a lot, even if it's not for my personal keys, I use them on other things all the time. This one was a little hard for me to include, but I had to because I, I really liked the design but some of these companies on Amazon that sell titanium carabiners and stuff, they will rip off designs from different makers. I, it's hard to really know who was the original maker of what anymore when it comes to this sort of stuff on Amazon. If, as far as I know, this is an original product. I, I don't know for sure, but this is a titanium carabiner key clip from Bang TI. And the way this split ring works is really, really nice. Anything that saves my fingernails from getting ripped by a split ring is a huge win in my book. The way this one works is you just pull the split ring to the side. So you don't have to dig your nail under it. You can just use the meat of your finger and pull it to the side and slide on whatever you want. But this carabiner is the real trick here. Because of the way that titanium is, it's got a spring to it. And this gate is never gonna fail on you unless this cracks down here or breaks, which it could over time. But these are just really, really solid. I find the size of this to be perfect. I've been carrying my keys on this exact carabiner for about a week now with no complaints whatsoever. I've had the I1R EOS and the James Brand Elko on this little wire cable. I have my car keys on this and then my normal keys, my house keys and office keys on another. And uh, this has worked really, really well for my keys. I, I miss my magnetic breakaways, but I was just testing stuff for this video and I really like this Bang TI carabiner. It's very compact, very, very sturdy. I've not had any problems with anything coming off of this. Really like it. This set though, is not cheap. It being titanium, this set is $20. So you are gonna spend a little more because it's titanium, but I think it's worth it for something like this. This is something that I get a lot of questions about and, and it's because this is my preferred key organizer. This is just a little, shackle and for years i've used orbit keys key smarts key bars and all sorts of different key organizers but i always always come back to this key shackle right here or this one this one you can find at most hardware stores for about a dollar or two sometimes hobby stores will have them even smaller than this but the true utility key shackle you can get for about seven bucks on Amazon. And it's just about as minimal of a key organizer as you can possibly get. It's really just a screw and a U-bolt. Typically it comes with four of these little uh, spring clips right here. And you're supposed to put your keys on each of the spring clips and then those attach to this. But I just eliminate these from the equation and use this a little differently than how it's intended. And I prefer it like this. 
but I, I really think that this is one of the best value key organizers you can get. Seven bucks and it has these with it as well, which you can use in, in the place of a Nitize s -beaner and attach stuff directly to your keys. But the True Utility Key Shackle is just one of my favorite pieces of gear and it's just seven bucks. Next up is another split ring option where it's not gonna destroy your fingers. This is the Exotac Free Key System. And the way this split ring works is it's angled such that if you push on one side, it opens it up just enough to get one of these flat split rings through there and you can put stuff on and take stuff off your keys without having to use your fingernails, which is a really, really, really nice thing. This set right here, actually I got a two pack of these for 10 bucks. I think you can get one pack for seven. You, you can also find these at Lowe's Home Improvement. I know I've seen them there. You can find them at REI sometimes, but Exo Attacks makes a bunch of different survival and EDC items. But this right here, the free key system is something I think is overlooked. It's not something I carry anymore, because I'm on to so many different things now, but I love these little flat split rings. $7 for one set of these or 10 for a two pack is really not bad at all. These are really also like a really great little stocking stuffer or gift that you can give somebody and people are gonna love this. Next up is another item from one of my budget videos and that is the Zach Tool Tactical Key Ring Holder. This goes on your belt and your keys go on this split ring and this right here is just one of the best pieces of gear you can get for $5, bar none. It's just, it's worth way more than five bucks, but that's what it costs and it's just so great. It's just one of the best options for getting to your keys very, very quickly. It's mainly meant for utility belts and law enforcement and first responders, but this right here, for me, was one of my favorite things that I've discovered since starting this channel, which is saying something because I've discovered a lot of new things but this, for just being five bucks, I think it's a steal. It's a really great piece of gear. If you want something that's quick release for your keys and you don't wanna to have to spin for a magnetic quick release, or you want something that's maybe a little more secure than that, this right here is your option. Five bucks, they do have different versions of this one, but this is just the one that I got for the video. And finally, these right here are, I've always liked these things, but I've never really used them a ton. These are just little steel cables for your keychain, And I use it for something like this, where I can put a couple pieces of gear on my key clip and I can just have them organized in different things. Stuff that I can, change out very quickly on my key setup. I have the i1R EOS, the James Brand Elko knife, I have my keys and then my home and office keys, right? It looks a little bulky right now. This is not how I always carry it, but when I'm headed out the door, if I'm not taking my truck and I'm taking Alex's car, I just take this off. I have hers on one of these as well and I just pop hers on and I'm ready to go. Now this comes at $6 for a 20 pack. The problem is they're not all great quality. So if you get one, see that? They'll break off. I almost lost some gear because of that one day. So this 20 pack, you're gonna go through a few of them to find a decently made one. There are probably better brands out there than this. Most of them are gonna be under 20 bucks. This is just the one I went with. I would not recommend the one I went with because even though they were rated highly, some of them break. This one's about to break as well. So you will go through them trying to find a decent one. This is one from the same pack and I've not been able to break this one. So it's just kind of hit or miss on the quality of these steel cables. It, what it comes down to is some of them just aren't crimped very well. This is another really strong one. So just double check the strength of these steel cables before you actually put your gear or your keys or anything on them because if they break while you're out and about, you're gonna lose your stuff. And that's not something anybody wants to deal with. So just double check the strength of these before you put your stuff on them. Three out of the 20 so far are no good. That's 17 left that are possibly great. For six bucks, it's worth risking having, you know, four duds out of 20, five duds, even if it's 10 out of 20 that are duds, uh, $6 for 10 of them is still not bad. They're inexpensive. Just double check the strength of them before you put your stuff on them. That's the whole moral of the story. Next up, we're talking knives and there are a lot of knives under 20 bucks. One of those would be the Kershaw Shuffle. The Kershaw Shuffle, there's, it's available in the one, two, and the DIY. I think the DIY is the most expensive of the three, but the Kershaw one and two, I used to recommend those. I no longer recommend those knives after carrying one for a long time. I carried one personally for a long time and decided to no longer carry it. And then I carried one for the budget challenge video and knowing what I know now, I don't really recommend the Kershaw Shuffle anymore, but the Squid, 
which technically is usually priced a little over 20 bucks, can be found in plenty of places under $20. This is a steel frame lock with an 8CR13 MOV blade. Um, it's got great ergonomics. It's really small though. It's a little small for my hands, but if I needed a knife under 20 bucks and I could find this one, unless we're talking like Oppenel or a cheaper Swiss Army knife or something, the Squid is probably the knife I would recommend. You can also find an Ontario Rat 1 or 2 many times under $20. They go on sale very frequently. If you can find an Ontario Rat under 20 bucks, buy it. Don't even hesitate. Even if it's the Aus 8 version, buy it. Under $20, it's a phenomenal knife and you're not gonna find really anything better under 20 bucks. The CRKT Squid is the knife I would recommend if you are looking for a $20 knife. Not great, it's not perfect, but it does have deep carry clip, frame lock, a really solid thumb stud, great action. There's not much to hate about the Squid other than the fact that it's really small. The other options are something like this, the Gerber EAB. This is the EAB Lite, but just a utility knife that you can throw in your pocket. If you don't wanna spend more than $20 on a knife, I would recommend this, because you can find them for as little as eight bucks on Amazon. Uh, they're also at Lowe's and Walmart for about 10 to $12, but it's just a little utility knife that you can change the blade out on, and it's gonna be just as good as most other knives. It's not heavy duty, that's for sure. It's a very, very light duty knife, but it's worth the money, and it can double as a money clip. I've seen many people use this as a money clip, but the other option is the screw pop. So this is a keychain utility knife option. It's just a very minimal, discreet option for carrying a knife. Most people aren't gonna know what it is by looking at it. Like if you have this on your keychain, most people are just gonna think it's a bottle opener. And it's just a very discreet option for carrying a knife or something to cut boxes open or whatever, which is what most of us do anyway. You can put any standard utility knife blade inside here. It's great. It's got magnetic retention too. So if this lock bar does come open while it's on your keys, you can't really shake the blade out. I think this is a pretty safe option. It's very discreet and they're only about 10 bucks and you never have to worry about going without a knife. And if you hop on a plane, you can just toss that, keep this on your keys. You've got a bottle opener. There you go. All right, and finally, we're gonna talk wallets because there are a lot of affordable wallets. My least favorite in this list right here is the Travel Lambo wallet. I carry this for my $50 budget video and it was fine. It served its purpose. It did the job. I didn't love it but for, I think I paid five or $7 for this wallet. You really can't beat that. It's really, really inexpensive and it does the job. What more could you ask out of something that was only five or $7? Travel Ambo wallets regularly go on sale as well. They come in a billion different colors and different materials. This one says leather. I don't think this is real leather. I'm pretty sure it's pleather. If it is real leather, it's like half ounce leather. It's very, very thin, it smells like plastic. Pretty sure it's pleather. For five, seven dollars, you really cannot complain about this wallet at all. If you do, then you're just being too picky. My favorite super cheap wallet is this one. This is the one I carried for my hundred dollar budget video, and this is the Kinsed Elastic Band Wallet. I've had the Tight Wallet and a bunch of different elastic wallets. I love these things. This one was only five dollars. It's perfectly fine. I could still carry it today. I would have no qualms with this wallet whatsoever for five bucks. So if you like that idea, but want something a little more like the Travex Armored Summit wallet, this is your next best option. And this is a new wallet from Gerber. This is the Barbell wallet, and you've got your same metal frame, but instead of having a nylon band, you have an elastic band. The only downside that I've realized with this is that this elastic band allows cards to play a little too much and come up over this lip sometimes. Didn't really have any issues with it. I've carried it some. Uh, I think it's a great wallet. For 20 bucks, it's really, really neat. It's one of the best that you can get for that price point, I think. Great little wallet. And just because everything has a bottle opener, you have a cap lifter right here on the back of the wallet, but you do have to pull your cards out to be able to access that cap lifter right there. And then finally, one of my favorite wallets, I've had this thing for a very long time. I use it now for business cards and I just toss it down in my backpack. But this is the Chums Surf Short wallet. This comes in a multitude of colors. You, I found this one at REI. You can also find this at Academy Sports and they're all over the place. They're only about 10 bucks on Amazon. You've got a zip pocket on this side. You have a zip pocket on this side with actually two different flaps with a window. And you have another quick access pocket right here with there's typically a split ring here. Uh, you could use this to hold gear like a flashlight. I think this holds the i3T perfectly. You could also put a little pry tool down in there. This could be your gear organizer EDC wallet. 
and it works really, really great. I typically carry this wallet when I'm at the beach or when I'm on vacation or when I'm going fishing or around water because it's water resistant. It's not waterproof, but really great option, really cheap. I do love this wallet as well. So I've kept this one in my collection for a long time. That is gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you wanna support what I'm doing here, everything I talked about is linked down below. If you click through those links and purchase anything, I get a little bit of a kickback because those are affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It's just a way for you to support what I'm doing here by buying the gear that you wanna get anyway. You can also go to carry.best, which is my store, Carry Commission. You can buy merch like this as an you can buy merch like this or branded gear and soon customized gear like pins and magnetic quick releases, all sorts of other stuff that I'm customizing myself by hand. So be sure to go to carry.best. You can also go to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc to support there. But be sure to follow us on the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at bestmedc. You can find me, Taylor Martin, on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech. And until next time, carry on.